Hey there guys, Grimith here. Been about a week and a half since the last decision. Uh, I could have recorded this sooner, and I definitely had some free time to. Courtesy of the fact that I did do more Liberal Crime Squad, but eh, I kept you all in suspense, whatever. Although, keeping you all in suspense for a given decision perhaps was not the best choice on my part. Uh, by and large, you folks decided to look for the headless woman's head instead of her sword, courtesy of the fact that we have proven that because she is incorporeal, we're not going to be able to grab the sword. So let's go ahead and turn to page 21 to grab the sword anyway, to see what would happen if we had tried to do so. You try to grab at her sword, but you get a handful of nothing. The sword is no substance. It isn't solid. It's just air. The woman laughs. How can she do that without a head? My sword is nothing without me, she says mysteriously. And I am nothing without my head. If you want the sword, you must find my head. You heard the woman. What are you waiting for? Go find her head. Now! Turn to page 62, which is the exact same page that we, that you folks had voted on us turning to. So, okay, you tell her. I'll find your head. Wait here. But where should you look? You dash up the stairs to the attic. It's the only room you haven't been in since you arrived, and you definitely would have noticed... Sorry. Little, uh, puppy is playing in the kitchen, and I, uh... I had to turn my head just to make sure she wasn't doing anything she shouldn't be doing. You dash up the stairs to the attic, it's the only room you haven't been in since you arrived, and you definitely would have noticed a head if you'd seen one. You rummage around in the attic. You search through everything, twice. Trunks of old clothes, piles of old furniture, golf clubs. No ghost head. You glance around the dusty room. Think! There may not be much time left. If I were a ghost head, where would I be, you ask yourself. You suddenly spot a large moose head sitting on the floor by a broken chair. You kneel down to examine the moth-eaten moose head. Up close, it looks even worse. The antlers are cracked and one eye is missing. It is filthy. It has a musty odor. <laughs> it's not even human, but what choice do you have? It's the only head here. Besides, you're in a big hurry. You've got to get the sword before the coffins creep again. You grab the moose head and race downstairs. You only hope the keeper of the sword won't be furious when she sees the head you brought her. Cross your fingers for luck and turn to page 80. I found the head, you call out when you reach the landing. You clutch the moose nervously. You peer into the darkness, trying to find the headless ghost. The woman's body materializes on the steps below you. Good, her voice says. You still can't figure out how she can talk. Just set it down right there, on the stairs. Really, you think, this is going to work? Maybe the ghost hasn't seen the moose head yet. What will she do when she discovers what you've done? Trembling, you set the moose head down on the bottom step. You hold your breath. For a moment, nothing happens. Then, the moose head begins to shake. At first, it just rocks back and forth a little. But soon, it starts to vibrate wildly. The moose head begins to glow, as if there were a light inside it. Then a ghostly woman's face appears inside the moose head. You can't believe it, but there it is. The face of a beautiful young woman trapped within the dusty old moose head. Wow, you did it. You actually found her head. Turn to page 51. You stare at the glowing ghostly face. Your mouth drops open as the face rises out of the moose head. The woman's face floats up and hangs in midair right in front of you. Thank you, the head says. You have released me from my trap. Her eyes are large and bright blue. Her ruby lips shimmer in the darkness. Her long black hair hangs down, falling below her neck. Her neck? You glance at it and try not to scream. Torn flesh dangles from the bottom of her neck. Blood drips from the ragged edges. Suddenly you realize what you're seeing. 
It looks as if her head has been chopped off. Well, I'm glad the protagonist of the story is a f is a genius. Try not to faint. Turn to page 41. Your stomach turns at the sight of her bloody neck. Then you notice the ghost's body is still hovering below you. It floats up the steps and somehow attaches to her head. Thank you, she says, once she's in one piece. She hands you her foil. I am the keeper of the sword. Take this and use it as you will. Now I must return to my grave. You remember Mac McFarlane's instructions. Wait, you call. What's your name? Sarah, she whispers, as her form fades away. Then she's gone. You run to the phone and dial McFarlane's number. When he answers, you tell him you've got the sword. Good, McFarlane says. Listen carefully. Find her grave in the graveyard. Write down the year of her death. It's a special number. You'll need it. Then plunge her sword into the grave of the MPG. That's the only way to keep the graves from spelling out the curse. But how do I find the MPG, you ask? Oops, McFarling says. Call waiting got to go. Oh, man. Oh, man. I didn't do that in my voice. Whoa. You... Whoa, no way, man. Bogus. Hold on. Rewind. I gotta do that in my voice. That's not even cool, Grimoth. Lots of time has passed, but... You gotta do that in your voice. <laughs> I gotta warm up, though, first. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes! Fruit. So crates. Mr. The Kid, your mom's hot, man. Shut up, Ted. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Okay, good, McFarling says. Listen carefully. Find her grave in the graveyard. Write down the year of her death. It's a special number. You'll need it. Then plunge her sword into the grave of the MPG. That's the only way to keep the graves from spelling out the curse. I am the Duke of Ted. <laughs> but how do I find the MPG? Oops, McFarling says. Call waiting. Gotta go. Bogus. He hangs up. Call waiting, you think? What a liar. He just doesn't know how to help you find the MPG. Now what? If you go to the graveyard, turn to page 96. If you think the MPG will come to you, turn to page 125. We don't have that many decisions left on this uh, story arc here, folks. We've, as a team, you folks have done very well avoiding death collectively, as well as ridicule. <laughs> Good job on that, everyone. Let's see if you folks can do that again for us. Do we... Head out to the graveyard, or uh, kick back and chillax and wait for the most powerful ghost to say, Sup. Then we could be like, Lol, ha, we got the sword, now you dead. <laughs> One of these decisions is the correct decision. Choose wisely. Yeah, choose wisely.